The uh, Valerie, the uh, symbolist poet, said of the movie, it is the complete, perfect, mechanical form of memory, it re visual memory. This is a fascinating and startling insight to think of the movie as a form of mem memory storage. Now anybody can see the book in that form. There's a certain sense in which the book is a, sto a storage system. Uh, the movie as a storage system, a visual storage system, a visual memory, points straight toward the computer as a storage system which takes on all the senses. The movie, though, as a visual, complete visual memory, terrified people in, the, in 1900 because it seemed to rob them of all their natural mental functions. The world of circuitry, of electric circuits, takes people profoundly inside themselves, is a kind of entropic world. It folds us in. It creates a thing like the safety car. The safety car is the car turning in upon itself entropically, and entropy, you know, is the law of declining energies. The uh, entropy turning inward upon itself, the, car, the, the, uh, the safety car becomes a padded cell for maniacs to drive it. And most people, you know, are inclined to say when they hear about the safety car, but wouldn't anybody in a safety car go berserk? Wouldn't he just bump into everybody and everything? Isn't that a strange reaction? It's like the old, you remember the old bump cars at the, uh, at the circuses? They, the, some people tend to regard the safety car as a bump car in which you can really behave as if you're in a Sherman tank and you can just go rip, <laughs> rip roaring around knocking everybody helter skelter. Um, but the, um, the tendency then of the movie to become um, a kind of iconic form at first and then gradually a high-fi, high-definition form, uh, le leads me to just say a word or two about the rise of the visual because the movie represented our Western world going into very top gear visual life and now with TV, we've slipped into very low gear visual life with a resulting change of psychosomatic adjustment and a change of mood. But I just want to say a couple of things, especially with an audience like this, interested both in the book and film and other forms. I just wanted to draw your attention to this aspect, that the work of people like Innocent Havelock, Havelock's preface to Plato sort of volume, and the work of Barfield, in a book called Saving the Appearances, have drawn attention to the fact that with the rise of uh, phonetic literacy, with the coming of phonetic literacy, people got a detachment from the world that the old native societies never were able to achieve. Phonetic literacy, by pushing up visual life into high intensity, gave people a form of detachment that was absolutely new in human history. It created the civilized man, the, the detribalized individual. And subsequent improve, improvements in writing and printing and bookmaking intensified that detachment. I'm talking about the medium as the message or the massage, you, if you live in an intensely visual world, you learn the habits of civilized detachment. If you live in an intensely auditory and tactile world, you learn the habits of empathy and involvement. But uh, Havelock describes in a most impressive way the stages by which the Greeks moved out of the world of Homer, the auditory poetic world, into the world of Plato, and the visual classification of ideas and data. This is now presumably a tape that is being played backwards. We are now rapidly, thanks to electronic technology, moving from the world of Plato back to the world of Homer, from the world of intense visual classification back to the world of intense auditory involvement. 